Our pleasure now to welcome in our guy, Michael Phillips from Phoenix, the owners' meetings. Uh, Michael, is the Biltmore still as beautiful as I remember it? It's it's the one seat of places to have this event. It's it's stunning. It's uh, it's beautiful weather today, about 75 and sunny. Uh, you, you can be as jealous as you'd like. Yeah, it's that I do. It's funny because Logan was asking me to record the podcast this morning. He's like, what's the owners' meetings like? Like, is it a good thing for like access, like the combine? I'm like, not really. I kind of forgot about the coach's breakfast and like those. That's actually a pretty good deal um, because you you get a nice unfettered access not only to your guy but to everyone. Like I remember talking to Andy Reid about Alex Smith way back when, um, but I was like, you do just get to hang out at this ridiculous hotel and stalk and and then get told that no, you can't talk to the Snyders. But it's it's such a pleasant place. You can't even be mad. No, that is a hundred percent true. All right. As you are on the ground out there, like I kind of know what the top things are as we get them through our Twitter filters and our Twitter machines uh, to sound like I'm 100 years old. Uh, As you're on the ground out there in Phoenix, what seems to be the talk of the day uh, is, I'm guessing it's Lamar, uh, but also Commanders adjacent. Yeah, league-wide, obviously, it's it's Lamar. I I mean, locally, the only story that matters is is the sale, you know, and, and will it happen and when will it happen and all those details i'm sure we'll go into that but yeah lamar really dominating the proceedings all of the coaches asked this morning are you going after lamar why are you going after lamar why aren't you going after lamar uh the local beat writers talked with uh martin mayhew about that a little while ago i'm sure those quotes have made their way out uh to the twitter machines i've I've telegraphed mine in to be posted later uh you know tonight uh so yeah you know it's it's what's lamar gonna do uh what What's the market going to be for him? Why is nobody seemingly interested in going after him? A um, lot, lot of questions out there. Let me ask you a, a very simple question, because I feel like people are making Lamar math way harder than it needs to be. To me, it is very simple. There is no overlapping Venn diagram two circles where it is a deal that is worth paying Lamar Jackson and that the Ravens won't also accept and match. Is the, isn't it, it – like, what am I missing here? Yeah, it, it, it does feel a little bit like the Ravens are using Lamar Jackson uh, as, you know, using the other teams as a means to negotiate with Lamar Jackson, uh, which is, you know, what, what this process is essentially. You know, somebody brings a contract back, they get the, the right to refuse or, or to accept it. I, I agree with you that it, it seems very unlikely that a team would pony up a number so big that the Ravens would say – my goodness, this is astounding. We can't possibly do this number, you know. But, uh, I mean, what is, is that five for 250 all guaranteed? Like, is, is that where you start to flinch? I mean, I, I don't know. It's, it's a number he's not going to get. I'll say that much. Now, co- coloring the whole thing is also this. Last year it was a great year to be a veteran quarterback. You remember Sam Bradford gets traded. Uh, you know, wins, wins the um, – or, sorry, Matt Stafford gets traded, wins the Super Bowl. Um, the market is, oh, you got to go get a veteran quarterback. Russell Wilson gets paid. Deshaun Watson gets paid. Um, Russell Wilson contract looks bad now. Um, the Deshaun Watson contract looks really bad now. Uh, the Aaron Rodgers extension look, looks bad now. And, and by the way, Matt Stafford turned out was not the only reason the Rams won the Super Bowl. So it, this is a bad year to be a veteran quarterback out there looking for money. Um, so I think there are a number of factors going on out there, a number of reasons why the Lamar market is not materializing. Um, it's a copycat league. Two years ago, everybody was told, you have to have a veteran quarterback to win a Super Bowl. Now we're hearing, oh, you can't have a veteran quarterback and win the Super Bowl. That contract drags you down. So it's a little bit of bad timing, too. That's a good point. Uh, Michael Phillips, Richmond Times Dispatch with us here on the Team 980. All right, to the local squad and the sale. Um, What is being discussed, like media-wise, like asking other owners, and then what's being discussed as best as we know behind closed doors with anything tangentially related to the commander's sale? Yeah, the, the, the big time to keep an eye on is, is tomorrow when they do the privilege session. That's owners only. Uh, you know, that's kind of where uh, you have the Don Van Natter reports uh, all come from with Seth Wickersham, you know, those, those details. Um, that, that's when that happens, when, when they get to throw down in private, you know, not, not in the big sessions and the big auditoriums. Yeah, you just you know Dan Snyder is going to come up there, obviously. Uh, Tanya Snyder is here. She is representing the team. Uh, we, did, we did see her earlier today. Um, so she is here. Jason Wright is here. Uh, of course, Ron Rivera, Martin Mayhew. Uh, so, so, you know, that part of the operation all here and representing the commanders uh, at these owners' meetings. It's, uh, it, I mean, 
everybody is just so cautious to go out of their way. I'm talking about non-Washington people now. Uh, you know, the other owners are just going out of their way to not say anything, to make sure to hedge, to, to not say, oh, you know, uh, you got to vote him out, or an interstate-style comment. You know, they've, they've very clearly been told, look, this is a delicate thing. This could go off the rails at any moment. Don't be the person that screws it up. Has Ursay spoken yet? <laughs> he has not. So that's, uh, you know, uh, your, your other version of guy who will say anything at any time was Jerry Jones. He went today. Uh, he, he did not want to wade into the details uh, other than to say it's very important for the nation's capital to have a team that's all it can be, um, which, look, I mean, Jerry answers to the dollar, and uh, the, the dollar has spoken and says there, there's no public funding available in three different localities, yep. D.C., Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia, for a new stadium. That's all Jerry needs to hear. So I, 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 didn't, I didn't interpret that as a turning on Dan so much as a, hey, look, there is money to be made here. There is a cathedral to football to be built here. Uh, and and it's, as, as the elder states of the NFL, I'm here to make sure that happens. Right. We know Jerry loves him a cathedral of football. Uh, he built one yep. himself. He helped uh, it happen in L.A., and he would yep. like one uh, to, to go on the East Coast as well. Something that caught my eye from an Albert Breer report. And I don't know. I might be reading too much into this, but Breer had said that, that it might come up in the Finance Committee, too. And that I, it might have just, again, been a timing thing where I had just done an interview with Eben Noby Williams last week where he talked about some of the constraints around team sales and how the NFL is quickly approaching a ceiling on who can actually buy teams because the teams with the current rules on debt and cash requirements are actually too expensive for almost everybody on the planet. Do you think, and like, what have you heard about the finance committee and what they're talking about and the potential for changes that could allow, say, a Josh Harris and a Mitchell Rails to buy this with less than 30% cash uh, in terms of liquidity and, and and also potentially take on more debt or even private equity entering the the equation. Yeah, uh, you know, and, and the, that committee did meet uh, in West Palm as well a few weeks ago and discussed this. I, I get the sense that the goalposts aren't going to move in this particular instance for this particular situation uh, just because of the optics on that of, oh, my goodness, you know, there are there are no buyers unless, you know, they change the rules for, for Dan. I, I just don't think it's going to happen for this sale. I will say this. If it does happen for this sale, I would look for it to be for a minority owner to come in. Um, I know we use the phrase minority owner for a lot of different things. In this case, I mean an actual minority, a black person, a woman, uh, you know, some, somebody uh, who would bring diversity to the ranks of NFL ownership. Uh, I, I think that's, that's a potential reason to change the rules here to, to bring that into the fold. Roger Goodell has obviously talked about the need for more diversity in the league, the need for more black owners, black coaches, things of that nature. Um, I, I think that's what it would take to get to get movement on that issue for this sale in particular. Uh, it, is, it is difficult. It is difficult to come up with the money. I mean, it's going to be a $2 billion check for whoever it is, but I, I do get the sense that the Harris Rails group is capable of doing that. So I don't think that's going to be an obstacle if they want to complete this in the traditional sense. Right. Uh, obviously, if Bezos were to swoop in, he's got the, the ability to get that kind of cash as well. Uh, some of yep. the other folks we've learned about, uh, maybe that could be a little more difficult, depending on who else is in their group. Michael Phillips with us, of course, from the Richmond Times-Dispatch. Um, do you have any sense of, of the actual timeline now? People are saying, like, oh, these owners' meetings, what is it, the mid-end of May, somewhere in there, in Minnesota. Like, do we think it'll be done by then? Like, what what is the latest in terms of movement on this? And also... Is everyone kind of staring around going, hey, why is this taking so long? Well, you're dealing with two time frames here. One is the announcement of who it will be, and two will be the vote to confirm and finalize the sale. And so those are different events. There, there is going to be, you know, the announcement of who it is and then the formal approval of that person. And so I, I think when people are talking about May, they're talking about the formal approval leg of the process. Uh, not not the choosing portion of the process. And, and look, that goes back to what you were asking about earlier, Craig. Uh, you know, people, why does this take so long? And, and the answer is because everybody's dancing on tiptoes here. It's a very delicate matter. It's a it's a multi billion dollar transaction uh, with a guy who doesn't want to do a multi billion dollar transaction. It's uh, you know there there's a lot uh, a lot that could go wrong here. And I, I think everybody's nobody wants to be the person that rocks the boat and causes this to not happen. Well, there's one person walking around with a hammer. Her name is Mary Jo White. And the Post reported that Dan has refused to be interviewed twice 
by Mary Jo White. I'm guessing Roger Goodell will be asked about that tomorrow, but do, as you talk to league people and, and kind of around everybody out there, is there a sense that perhaps that, that hammer could be wielded if Dan continues to drag this out in a major way? Absolutely, yeah. I know it's this ends with him selling the team or him being forced to sell the team. Those are, those are the two possible outcomes here. Uh, I, I wouldn't put a lot of stock into other outcomes at this juncture. Uh, I, I think those are the things that matter, um, you know, that, that there's enough leverage to get him out, both financially uh, and on the investigative side of things, that, that it's not going to be uh, something where Dan says, I'm not selling, and they just sit on their hands and say, okay, Dan, well, I, I guess – I guess you can keep the team. Like I, I think they're, I think they're ready to be proactive and, and move into action if they need to. I, they don't want to though. They really, really don't want to. Um, I, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to say this as reporting because I'm not reporting this, Craig. But like, I think they would be willing to wait potentially longer than people are comfortable with to get a voluntary conclusion to this process. And and you know, I everybody's hopeful it won't it won't come to that long time happening um but i think there's such a desire for this to happen on on a on dan's timeline not the owner's timeline uh that that they're willing to wait until this gets uncomfortable before they spring into action so this i talked about this earlier we'll wrap up with this thought um i don't know why his timeline wouldn't be as soon as possible and i'm guessing tanya's not talking while she's out there i'm guessing that that request has been denied uh, sure. and been made. So, like, what I would ask Tanya is, like, hey, how much does this suck, and why don't you want it to be over? Because every single day, and I realize, like, they're living in oblivion on their yacht and or in London or whatever the hell they are where they're not listening to – I mean, I don't – I doubt Dan has listened to Sports Talk Radio in this town for a long time anyway. But, like, they're pretty immune to all of this stuff because they can af- quite literally afford to be. But to the extent it is impacting their lives – it's got to be dragging them down. I just don't understand, Michael, why they like. Why is their timeline longer than everyone else's? Like, what are they getting out of milking being the owners of the Washington Commanders for an extra thirty days? Like, just sell the thing. I mean, I, I think money is the answer, right? Like the the you know, if they think they can get an extra, you know, the, the amounts we're talking about here are staggering. By the way, it's a six billion dollar sure. transaction. Like, if they wait for an extra like little something on the top. That it's like a point two, right? Like, you know, hey, like if, if they hang on to this thing for an extra two months, maybe an extra point two materializes there. Like this little point two we're talking about is $200 million, Craig. That's like, that's more than the Powerball. Like right. it, it's an absurd amount of money we're talking about here it, it, that, you know, it's, why wouldn't they just get it over with? I mean, $200 million is that's a yacht or that, you know, that that's an investment fund or that that's a company you can, you can buy into or whatever it is. Like, you know, you, you got to put these big numbers in perspective. Like that, that's actually quite substantial. No, that's a great point. And uh, it's probably the correct answer. Um, and especially money, when you can, money, yeah. Money well, is always the answer at the NFL owners. Meeting. That is, that is a great, great point. And especially when you can just be patient and live in oblivion on your yacht in the yeah. south of France or wherever it happens to be, we'll have to go to the Yacht Tracker Twitter page to, to figure it out. <laughs> and now we've, now we've gone full circle. We're, we're back on Twitter again. Yeah, that, we, we end where we started, and uh, it, it is with the demise of us all uh, online on Twitter. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, perfect. All right, Michael Phillips, make sure you read his coverage in the Richmond Times-Dispatch. Uh, dispatching from Phoenix at the very nice Biltmore State Hotel that none of the reporters actually stay at, but the owners love to. I mean, yeah, that, that sums it up. We're happy to get a taste of the good life for a few minutes uh, before we report back. All right, man, we'll see you. Thank you. All right, later. This is the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.